Welcome to Union Station and on Iowa Live over on KCRG 9.2. So excited. We got a great show talking Hawkeye football, talking Hawkeye basketball. The Kennedy boys basketball team going to join us over at 30 minutes past the hour. Scott Docterman from The Athletic and Iowa's all-time leading receiver Marvin McNutt joining me. Guys, the big news over the weekend, Kayvon Merriweather decides he's going to go to the NFL draft, opt out of the Music City Bowl. Your initial reaction when you saw that? It's not that surprising anymore. I mean, opt-outs used to be a big yeah. deal about four years ago. Now they're just a kind of a regular part of the of the game. And, and I think, you know, his, uh, his body of work was very impressive at Iowa. Um, you know, is he, is he going to get drafted? I don't know. I mean, I think he's probably late round, maybe an undrafted free agent type. But I think also uh, this is an opportunity to not put any more wear and tear on your body and put yourself in a great situation because how you perform at the combine is uh, half the battle. It is. And I, th I think for, for Kayvon, I mean, for, for me personally, he's, he's done enough on the field during this season and during these years at Iowa show that he's NFL ready. Um, so I don't think teams will really worry about that needing another game of film. The other thing is he's shown his leadership abilities, his ability to, to like go through all the tough times Iowa's gone through and be a leader in those moments. Mm -hmm. um, those are huge things that's going to allow him to, to maybe have an opportunity to get drafted. And he's a special teams guy. I mean, he knows he can jump out on special teams. And at Iowa, um, that's huge for us in, in that next step in the process. But I think, you know, really for us, it's, it's a matter of, okay, now next man in, who's going to be the guy to, to fill his shoes? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So we'll go to that first and come back to Kayvon Merriweather in just a second. Who is the one guy you expect to fill his shoes? And then maybe there's kind of a, a conga line of guys coming behind that. Uh, this is Xavier Wampa's time. This is yeah. the time everybody has wanted to see him since he signed with Iowa a year ago, and he's a five-star, uh, incredible skill set, the best we've ever seen at that position. And, and he might have been playing earlier if Kayvon wasn't so good. You know, he got All-American honors. But I think this is his opportunity, and, and I think he'll show that he's ready for it. I agree. I think I think it has to be Xavier Wanapa. Um, if he if and if he's not, I mean, there's a, there's obviously something underlying there, maybe an issue. But I'm pretty sure this is his moment. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's there to fill in the shoes, and 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 this is what he wanted. He wanted to be able to say, okay, I can come in, maybe possibly play. Coach Parker, you know, he, he's probably very honest about what's going to happen. Um, and then by the time he gets there. I, th I think this is a showing that that should be exciting for him. The one thing I want to see is, okay, now how does he handle, you know, making adjustments on the fly? How does he handle uh, seeing things that they haven't shown on film that that's going to come? With Kayvon Merriweather, he honestly, he deserves more than just the one segment. For all he's done for Iowa, came in as a three-star recruit from Belleville, Michigan. They're not all five stars like Wampa, but he really he improved his numbers. Just about every year he got better, turned into a second-team All-American this year. And Marv is a wide receiver. I'm sure he's not a guy you, you would want to hit you. Oh, no, I never want to get hit, period. So, so <laughs> this time. Uh, you, but, no, I, at the end of the day, he's, he's, built, he's built like an NFL safety slash, you know, cash position guy that can come in and play Nick if he shows that type of skill and if he gets better I think and I think those are things that that he he's going to have to show when he gets to the combine and again being a second team All-American that's huge for him you know there there are a lot of Phil Parker specials over the years yeah. and a lot of them it's even hard, easy to remember and easy to forget some of them but I think in his case he's at or near the top of the list here's a guy who's a basketball player yep. who had basketball ability go and decided instead to take that leap to play football uh, he played special teams as a true freshman then his second Second year, he was going to start, yeah. and then he hurts his foot, and he redshirts all year, loses his position to Jack Kerner. Yep. Then he's kind of a part-time guy. Now he's been a full-time guy, but it's beyond that. It's beyond what he's been able to do on the field that sets him apart from most of the players I've ever been around because his leadership is is immeasurable. Yeah. Uh, what he was able to do uh, during the racial bias investigation a yeah. couple of years ago and lead that team, how he was able to conduct himself and put himself up here and everybody followed behind him yeah. um, in so many ways. I mean, we at, at Iowa Media, we put together the, the – Golden Gavel Award uh, for Duke Slater, and that goes to a player who not only uh, exhibits himself in media interviews, but in all situations, and he was the inaugural winner, and now is a team captain, all these other things. I think he's just been a remarkable young man, yeah. going to Selma, Alabama with the Big Ten, doing all these different things. If, if you can't support us, this is a Kayvon Merriweather quote from the summer of 2020. This is one of his tweets. If you can't support us right now with this movement and with our team possibly taking a knee during the national anthem, do not support us. 
during this football season. He really helped to change the culture of Iowa and kind of build a bridge rather than a wall, Marvin. For sure, and that's, and that's where I think those guys wanted in that in what they were trying to understand, get everybody to understand as a team, um, is that they're in this thing together, the whole group, and, 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 and really, you know, with, with everything that, that does go on and had, had went on at the time, um, more than ever, you needed some, some kids, some guys with that type of background, and like Kay- Kayvon Merriweather, to step up and say, no, I'll lead this group. I'll figure out what we need to do and, and take charge in this moment and not be afraid to, to have the tough conversations. So Kayvon, a great player, a great person off the field, and it turned into a fantastic player this season. Uh, just to recap, uh, as we close the book on all the All-American teams, Kayvon Merriweather was a second-team AP All-American and second-team Sporting News All-American. Toyler, uh, Tory Taylor gets the nod from the Football Writers Association of America and the AP as a second-teamer. And then, of course, Campbell, now the 13th, is it, Scott? Unanimous yeah. All-American. You really can't tell the story of the 2022 Iowa football season without those three. Not at all. I mean, you go back to the beginning <laughs> and the yeah. South Dakota State game and, <laughs> and what Torrey Taylor was able to do. And, and you look at his numbers. I mean, he had 17 punts inside the 10, but 13 inside the 6. And how, you know, Iowa's offense, as we know, was, was challenged to be really nice and kind. But um, I think it, you know, if – Without ha- making the other team go 90 yards, yeah, <laughs> you know, that'd be. It, we, I don't even know if they'd be in a bowl game. And then, of course, as you're seeing right now, Jack Campbell, the best linebacker in Iowa history. Yeah, uh, hands down. And Scott, you tweeted the the list of the 13 unanimous All Americans. Uh, t- the the voters they know when you're an unanimous All American, you're getting put in the annals of, of college football history. So why does he deserve to be next to those names? You know, why did you vote for him in, on all your ballots? Yeah, and I, I did a uh, – I'm Football Writers of America. I'm the Big Ten rep, and he, he has an easy case. And, you know, first of all, it's mainly about on the field, but he tips the field, Jack yeah. Campbell does, when he's out there. He makes a difference on each and every play, the way he covers ground, the way he hits, the way he fills gaps, the way he has everybody situated. Everybody looks at him and listens to him. And, and then you look at the Minnesota game. That was a game at the time that was going to determine whether Iowa had a chance to win the division title. And he gets a, a key turnover and then a, 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 the missed six. Yeah. You know, yeah. Called back. Uh, I don't know what it is about Minnesota officials, but there's an <laughs> issue there. Uh, but you look at, uh, you know, all of those and then just the way he conducts himself. Yeah. And, you know, he won the Campbell Award as the, the – premier scholar athlete in college football uh it goes without saying that that he stands at the summit of players that we've seen here and i I would agree i mean uh at the end of the day i mean they normally don't make uh you know awards after you in college until you're in the nfl and have played some years but this would be one i wouldn't be surprised if they come back and add a tag to to you know dick to something Dick Buckus Campbell Award. You know, it's just that's how much of an impact he has at the position. And we've had great linebackers at Iowa. So even not even just to consider him on the grace, but he he has done it and in, 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 in a, such a, a fashionable way. I mean, scoring touchdowns, I mean, safeties, you name it, tackles for loss, fourth down plays. I mean, the kid has done so much at that position that it's just unbelievable. Next segment, I want to – I'm going to call it All-American Snubs and Futures only because – you could make an argument certain players maybe were snubbed uh, to, for All-Americans, but you can definitely make the argument that future, uh, in the future, I was got some All-Americans. And I have video coming up of Cooper DeGene and Lucas Van Ness, who I'll yeah. just get on the record. I think they're both future All-Americans. Uh, Sam Laporta I have here as well as maybe a guy you can have uh, you can make the case he was an All-American. So starting with those three, but anyone else you want to kind of make the case for either now could be an All-American or could be in the future. You know, Marvin and I have talked a lot about Cooper DeGene yeah. and how his skill set kind of marries that of Tyler Sash with Micah Hyde, yeah. and that is, uh, that's not only NFL, that's yeah. Pro Bowl NFL, sure. you know, and he could just do so many different things. He agreed, I and I agree because at the end of the day, too, he also came in as not playing that position, right? So it's not as if that was what he came in as the starter as when we started the season and he finished as a corner. I mean, you can put him anywhere on that defense and he becomes – the guy you have to pay attention to. Where is that kid? And and, and honestly, the, the plays that he's making, um, he definitely should have been an All-American, in my opinion. Um, obviously, he got hurt, so that might have swayed some voters or they maybe didn't watch Iowa football and understood how impactful he's, he was. Um, but his, his impact 
goes goes way beyond just on the defensive side as well. The fun thing about Cooper DeGene is he starts as a guy who plays all kind of positions. Honestly, when he's a senior, he could finish that way. He's kind of the queen uh, on the chessboard. He could do just a, a little bit of everything. Uh, well, go ahead, Scott. Yeah, I was going to say, you could put him at quarterback. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You should probably should, and but <laughs> <laughs> at least this Less year. The Iowa fans. But, you know, but, you know uh, he's, he's – to me, he's probably a three-year guy because yeah. I do think he's yeah. probably a high NFL draft pick and what his special teams ability. We'll say that the Big Ten had some amazing defensive backs. Yeah, they did. Devin Witherspoon at Illinois, Joey Porter at, at yeah. Penn State. They were and some really good punters too. Yeah. I mean, like, at the end of the day, Big Ten football had some really good <laughs> specialists. Yeah, you can you can make an argument for a lot of those guys. All right, turning towards the future, got a big commitment in Eric All Jr., uh, an All Big Ten tight end for Michigan in 2021. He had a season-ending surgery this year. I, I'd imagine, Scott, this is mutually beneficial. Eric All comes from Michigan. He benefits the Hawkeyes, and I imagine tight end you benefits him. For sure. I think this is a really good move for him and for Iowa. I mean, yeah. coming in with Cade McNamara, they know each other. They threw to each other. They went to the playoff together. They were yeah. team captains. So they already have that equity in, in college football, and that's going to be, you know, you know how yeah. Kirk loves that. And But I think his ability speaks for itself. And when you have him and Luke Lachey together with another year of Luke Lachey, you, you will have the best tight end combination yeah. in the country, yes. um, you know, because Brock Bowers can't clone himself. At this, this is going to be – very, very resemblant of of Noah Fant, T.J. Hawkinson year, just because of all the things you can do with Eric Hall. I mean, he, I've seen him split out and run really good routes and understand how to use his body on a fade ball. And him and Cade together obviously have that connection. When you have a connection that's that's like that, it's it, it's different. I mean, and that's those are the things that all of a sudden now. I mean, I mean, Laporta had a great year. I could see Eric Hall having a better one. When you say T.J. Hawkinson and, and Noah Fant, the, the eyes kind of get big yeah. here in Iowa City. All right, coming up next, talk about the bowl game, a little more football on Iowa Live. Oh. Welcome back to Union Station. We've got a bunch of tall guys here, uh, Kennedy boys basketball team. John, can you quickly introduce everyone uh, going name by name around yeah. here? Yeah, we got Kenzie Reed, Colby Dolphin, Carter Newhouse, Cyrus Courtney, Trayvon Crumry, Landon Dieters, Trey McCowan, um, Griffin Gertis, and Micah Schlake. All right, John, uh, I'll, I'll, you gave Kenzie, uh, one of your seniors, the mic first, so I'll ask you, Kenzie. Uh, it, you are kind of like the Jordan Bohannon of high school basketball where everyone in the MVC is asking, when are you going to graduate? Because you've been here four years. You've been cooking people left and right. Uh, you had a fantastic season last year, but for the team, it ended a little too quickly in the semis, kind of bittersweet because of how good it was. Uh, how did that motivate, that loss motivate you? Uh, first off, thank you, but it really motivated all of us because, like, right after the season, we all stayed together in the gym for, like, countless hours. So we just really wanted to come back this season with something to prove. And throughout the first couple games, I think we're proving that. So through the first five games, 5-0, and the signature win is probably at Cedar Falls, but you also have big wins uh, against Prairie and uh, against Jeff, uh, against teams uh, with guys you, you guys probably know. Uh, what's the key in starting 5-0? and Uh... Preparation, really. Coaches give us a really good practice plan, a really good game plan, and we really do a good job focusing and carrying it out, and it translates. What does it mean uh, to bring Kennedy, I don't want to say back to where it belongs because it's been here, but basically here competing for state titles every year? I mean, it feels great, really. All of us really want to compete, I know that, and we all just want to win. So when it's a group of guys that all want to win. All right, I want to ask you to pass the mic to Colby Dolphin a little bit because Coach talked about the spacing and how good your shooting is. You are shooting at an above 50% clip, and your team leads the, the state in three-point percentage. I know it's not a fluke because you were a great three-point shooting team last year. How are you able to hit threes at such a high rate every single year? Uh, just teammates, really. Uh, teammates are, uh, have a lot of confidence in the shooters. I mean, everyone on the team can shoot, and... We all get in great positions to shoot the ball and great passes to shoot so we have to shoot at the high percentage. All right, Carter, I want you to a uh, answer this question, and it's not to single you out, but this is a team that I think it, it, it's greater than the sum of its parts. You stand at, the roster lists you at about 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, this isn't the tallest team, but you guys have some really big hearts. How do you play bigger than your size on the roster? I mean, we press the whole game, so that's kind of where... 
I come in to play. I'm usually the one guarding the ball or one of us three, and then we just make them tired. By the second half, uh, they're just usually all worn out, and we can just translate our defense to offense. I got to imagine you take a lot of pride in your defense and turning defense to offense. Yeah. Uh, all right, we got to ask uh, about the new IHSAA new rankings. You guys are listed second in 4A, but behind a good team in Waukee Northwest who, did you guys beat them last year? So I don't, I don't know about that. Two, one, I, I'm, I'm curious, does coach tell you not to look at those rankings? Well, he just told us at film just later, but, um, or earlier, but I mean, we aren't too focused on that right now. We're kind of more focused on uh, the ranking at the end of the year. All right, real so quickly, for, for the three seniors, what, what does this program mean to you in your four combined years, well, 12 combined years uh, in Kennedy basketball? Uh, for me, it means a ton. It's been usually my favorite season of the year because we all just hang out and we all were winning games, so that's what's important to me. Yeah, Colby? Yeah, I mean, it just we all love winning and come to a program that's been winning the past couple of years, and it just feels good to be on a team that wins instead of, you know, teams we beat that you don't want to be on the other side of the locker room for. Uh, it's important to me because it's helped me build a lot of relationships with teammates and coaches and even my teammates' parents. Some of those relationships are going to last a very long time, longer than my high school basketball career, so I'm very thankful. All right, we, we got you guys here with the state semifinal trophy, but I know you guys ha have bigger goals. What are those goals, Kenzie? We want that state championship trophy, of course. All right, look. I will make you a promise, and I think Scott will be able to honor that promise. If you guys get a state championship trophy, that trophy will be sitting right here on our show on Iowa Live. Whenever you, you, whenever you guys take it from the Wells Fargo Arena, you know the time, you know the place. John, I, I, can you honor that promise? Oh, we'll be back for sure. All right, all right, guys, thank you so much. Audience, thank you so much for coming out through the snow. Uh, Scott will be back for our next time. No shows for another two weeks. Had a lot of fun on Iowa Live.